Namaste. Well, in the last video, we introduced the concept of attaining enlightenment by entering into Turiya through the gap or the transition between the different states of consciousness. This isn't the first time we brought this up, but it goes way back about three years ago to our series on Guru Vachika Kovai by Ramana Maharshi. And I'm surprised nobody asked the obvious question, how do you do it? <laughs> I've discussed the theory huh, and the terminology, but now what about the practice? Practically speaking, how do you do it? How do you enter into these exalted states of consciousness through the transitions, the sandhis, between the different states of consciousness? Well, first of all, you have to be living a clean life. That means no meat eating, no drugs, no intoxication. You should be observing continence. I don't want to use that word celibacy because the celibacy implies austerity, a complete uh, suppression of sexual activity. And there are many, or actually several, tantric practices, uh, especially Vajroli Mudra, which I guess we're going to have to go into in a separate <laughs> series, um, which involve a sexual activity with or without partner that does not end in ejaculation or orgasm. And this is as good as, if not better than, complete abstinence as far as its spiritual effects go. Uh, this is because the semen or the ovulatory fluid in the female get charged by this process of carezza, uh, to use the Italian doctor's term, or the, the proper term is vajroli mudra. And then it becomes even more potent when the semen is raised through the spinal channels the Sushumna. There's a story about Lord Shiva and Parvati uh, when they first got married. <laughs> they went on a honeymoon. And, you know, honeymoon is about, usually about making love, right? Well, they made love for 10,000 years of the demigods. <laughs> but Shiva retained his semen the whole time. And his semen became so potent that when he finally did emit it, uh, it was so fiery and so hot that nobody could deal with it. First, the earth tried to keep it and she couldn't bear it. And then she tried to give it to the Ganges and the Ganges was like boiling <laughs> and so on and so forth. But anyway, the point is, that the semen becomes highly energized by these practices of withholding the orgasm or ejaculation. So this is something that you have to do over a period of time. You can't just jump into it. It takes years of training. You have to train your body, train your mind, rebalance your whole energy flow trip. And it's, it's a big deal. But anyway, that is the best prerequisite that I know to this practice of entering Turiya through the dream state. Now the next thing is lucid dreaming. That is, one carries the waking consciousness into the dream state so that the uh, Svapna consciousness has elements of the Jagrat consciousness, 
or contain some of its qualities? How do you do that? I'm surprised. Nobody asked these obvious questions. How do you do it? <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, the best way I've found to do it is to chant a mantra while falling asleep. It helps to have a regulated schedule. In other words, you go to sleep and wake up at the same time every day. I usually wake up spontaneously any time between 1 and 3 a.m. This morning it was pretty early, a little before 1. Now it's dawn, beautiful time of the day. Birds are singing, everything's quiet. So the point is to hold on to the waking consciousness while going into the dream state. So if you chant a mantra, uh, of course, the mantra should be the name of your Ishta Devata. So for me, it's Om Namah Shivaya. Uh, I also have a goddess mantra, but that mantra is a little too long. The uh, Mahashodashi mantra is too long. It's like 23 and a half syllables or something like that. And uh, that's too long to keep in the mind while going into the sleep, a dream state. So, Om Namah Shivaya, or another simple mantra would be like, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, or Kling Krishnaya Namaha. Uh, something very simple. And that can uh, be like on automatic loop. You want the mantra to be so well grounded in your psyche that it can play pretty much on automatic. That way you don't have to hold on to too much of the waking consciousness, which would be a disturbance going into the dreams. In other words, you won't be able to fall asleep. So it should be an easy, simple mantra like Om Namah Shivaya. Then, very uh, important, for some reason, I'm not sure why, is that you go to sleep lying on your back. Uh, one of Shiva's thousand names is uh, he who always sleeps on his back. So a yogi should sleep on his back, at least in this phase of going into Svapna and Sushupti. And so all these things together, uh, a pure lifestyle, of course, no, no meat eating, absolutely no meat eating, meat eating, and partying and late night entertainments and all that, all that should be dropped. You should eat dinner. If you eat dinner, you should eat it early, two or three hours at least, so that you can go to sleep on an empty stomach. This is very important because if the stomach is digesting food, that takes a lot of energy and it takes attention away from the dreams. So this is the yogic lifestyle. At the end of the day, the body is tired. This works, by the way, during the day if you also, if you take a nap. Again, it should be regulated. You should take a nap at the same time. Most people in India usually take a nap between 2 and 4 in the afternoon. But that can vary between 1 and 3, or between 3 and 5, or, you know, something like that. But certainly no more than two hours. And again, it should be at the same time every day. And you can also do this practice uh, during this, that rest. So, okay. You're lying on your back, body's tired, stomach is empty, you're chanting your mantra. I find it helpful to use japa beads, japa mala, like this, and count, but not count out loud. I'm not counting one, two, three, <laughs> but just with the fingers, like this. 
Om Namah Shivaya, 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 Om Namah Shivaya. Notice the finger, index finger is not used, only the middle finger and thumb. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om. And again, the idea is to use the minimum amount of effort and attention. It should be pretty much on automatic. At some point, you're going to forget about the beads. You're going to forget about your body. And you're going to go into the dream state, Svapna consciousness. Then what happens? You'll find the mind starts making up stories. That's what dreams are. They're stories that the mind makes up. Sometimes the mind will have undigested emotional materials or memories or impressions that haven't been fully digested. And so the mind will make up a story. You may, on going into sleep, you may find that you have memories coming up. That's normal. And then at some point, the mind is going to start making original material. <laughs> it's the mind show. <laughs> Brought to you by Svapna, <laughs> the dream consciousness. <laughs> Everybody loves sleep, isn't it? Everybody loves dreaming. And this is another gift from God. It allows us to forget the trials and tribulations of ordinary everyday life, the humdrum monotony, the routine, you know, the whole thing, get up and dash off to work and all that. Well, I'm very lucky I'm retired, so I don't need to do that. I get up early and I do sadhana for hours. And it really I mean, puts my head in such a great place. <laughs> Cleanses the heart. And it's good for the body too. I do, every day I do like half an hour of hatha yoga stretches before dawn, and it just sets me up for the whole day. I have no old age aches and pains or rheumatism, arthritis, none of that. It's because I eat a very clean diet and I do hatha yoga every day. But in any event, so you want to forget about the body, let the body go. And if the body is not in a good state of health, of course, it's going to um, remind you it's going to have aches and pains and other complaints, and it's going to try to direct your attention toward them. Just let it go. Let the body go. Let all desires go. And let uh, volitional thinking go. Let the mind make up its stories. Let it talk to you. Let it show you things. Huh? But keep that mantra going mentally. Oh, by the way, any powerful mantra, especially your Diksha mantra, should be chanted mentally. We went over in the series on Lakshmi Tantra, we went over the different stages of speech. Vaikari speech is out loud, but Madhyam speech is silent, and it's much more powerful than ordinary speech, and this is how you should chant your mantra. So the way you bring your or maintain your awake consciousness in the dream state is through the mantra. This is the most useful, most practical insight I've had on this process. You're not going to read about this in any books. This is only known to those who get in there and get their hands dirty, so to speak, and try these practices. Maybe you'll find another way that works better for you. If so, share it in the comments and let us know. But the point is that one remains awake, at least to some degree, during the transition from waking to sleeping, from Jagrat to Swapna, because this is the first opportunity you get for a glimpse of Turiya, the transcendental state that contains all the others.
Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. 